Okay, hello. This is uh, November 17th, 2013, and today we're interviewing Mary Ann Bonine, who has been our chief uh, researcher and, and uh, our soul, really. She provided the roof for the Bonine House at a very early time. She's been with us since, since the very beginning, and uh, will be with us always. And we've talked to her about her research, how she came to be affiliated with the Underground Railroad Society, and what everything has meant to her. Uh, Marianne also was the um, creator of our of the Wax Museum, both in Portage, along with her daughter-in-law Stacy and Stacy's co-teacher Colette. And um, uh, from there, uh, was was uh, instrumental in creating the Cass County Wax Museum for Sam Adams School, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, to filming today are Brenda and, and Bill Beankoff, and I'm Kathy Lapointe, and we're just very happy to be able to talk to Marianne today. And we are at her home in, what, where is this? Galesburg. Uh -huh. Galesburg, in Galesburg, Michigan, okay. at, <laughs> yeah. at uh, Mary Ann's home. Very good. Yeah. There's a huge puzzle out there, you know, and, and we're working on one of the, some of the pieces of this puzzle. That's right, Brenda, that's exactly how it and is. And the puzzle is the truth, but you know, it's many colored and it, many textured and, and, and sometimes it, it's a varying uh, some people think that this is the truth, and sometimes yes. the truth is opinion. Mm -hmm. and, yes. um, and you try to come as close as you can to the truth, and I, uh, I, that really kind of struck at me because I think all of us historians and so forth, that's what we are trying to find is the truth. Right. And and the more you dig, the more you find. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as, as, as part of the research, Marion has, <laughs> has gathered is um, also honoring the original research of. Um, Sound and Mouse Nursery, oh, okay. and that's uh, become part of this collection, and a deep debt of everything. We all owe a deep debt of gratitude to Sandra for mm -hmm. for for really carrying this carrying this story on. Um, it's it's been part of mm -hmm. Cass County uh, for a long, long time. It's certainly been in the history books and pieces of it. But Sandra did a great deal to add to the story, and now Marianne has just expanded it. And like we said, this will just keep growing and living forever. And I put your your out your timeline oh, so okay. that they, I thought they could oh, orient. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nice. they could orient to the <clears throat> to the timeline. Mm -hmm. And then those are the things that I found. And then, if it's on a little clip like this, then that means that it's duplicates, and people are free to just take out what they want if there are duplicates. Oh, and you see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. This, this mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a Jax. land purchase that. William mm -hmm. East, um, that he made early on. Ah. So I tried to make sure that there were some primary source documents. Mm -hmm. They're not all primary, some are secondary, but I tried to find oh. some that were. Gosh. You know what, maybe we should come up here sometime. <laughs> Well, go through this stuff. Well, this well, is yours this now. Is, this, this is, is all, this is all our research. This is this will be housed in the Bonine House. This this is yours now. I'm. Yeah. I mean, it's people and their stories that we can we can get too. It's how they're telling right. their stories, right. right? And that would be really <clears throat> great if they knew their their mm -hmm. family history, you know, and had, yeah. had stories. Yeah. I think the Lawsons are one that could do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the there. I think uh, a lot. What, is this? This is what's good, like I said, it's just live eternally and just keep growing and growing and growing. Well, hopefully, that was oh, my yeah. that was my hope was that people would add what they have huh. themselves, and then it could be much more important than things that I've found on the internet or ancestry or something. You know, they might have they might have uh, you know letters or Bible yeah, yeah. pages or something, and that that's it. We'll have a whole room devoted to this. Yes, so, and so there'll be mm -hmm. we'll have. Ways to keep ah, this and national leaders with Cass County connections. These are dissertations that were done mm -hmm. about Cass County, mm -hmm. and they're filled mm -hmm. with great information, just great. Surviving freedom, African American farm households in Cass County. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this one I think especially Michigan Antebellum Black Haven, Cass mm -hmm. County. Ah, how cool! <laughs> so those are really good. Oh, Plus this cool. one. Look at all the little. Well, oh, I did that. Yeah, I was, as I was going through, there were little things that I thought were interesting, and I was trying to come back to it. So, anyway, so. Wow. 
Mary, is there anything else you want to just explain about what you've done here? <coughs> um, well, <laughs> that each of these books, like for instance, um, I think it was, was it uh, Fell who said someone came up to her who knew something about Harrison Ash. And I think whenever there's somebody like that, obviously he had some connection with Harrison Ash. And, and there is a book here, I, this is Harrison Ash, and I was thinking if there'd be some way that we could make that, that connection, you know, here he is. If we could somehow share this information yeah, with, with someone like that, he obviously had an interest mm -hmm. in Harrison Ash. Mm -hmm. And um, so, anyway. And, and like for someone like this, there are duplicates of the picture of Harrison, so he could pull that out and have it, you know. Mm -hmm. When, um, that's why I started out just making one copy of each and then realized that that was kind of silly. So then I started making duplicates. The biography of Harrison Ash. Anyway, there's, there's a, a whole story about that. So. And then anything that anyone, like say, if he has anecdotes or he has his story that we could right. add it in there. And, right. right. He could add it, you know. And those would be really valuable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Benjamin Wilson, who wrote one of the dissertations, he interviewed um, some of the families. Well, he said that he, he interviewed octogenarians who were alert. They had a good memory of their past and their family. And he interviewed these people. And I was thinking, I would love to see those, you know. I'm sure he took notes. I'm sure he took down the information about those, but because those people are gone now, of course. Mm -hmm. He did that in 75, so they're gone. So we will get in touch with, with him, though. I, I promise we'll, we will be, do that and get his notes, and that can just be, again, adding be, adding to mm -hmm. all, all this. That's just and, a great and way to here, increase here, Sometimes that. I would make a copy of a page in his dissertation, mm -hmm. but I did make sure that, that it was noted, that it was his, you know. I make sure that... <clears throat> That it was acknowledged that he collected it. So anyway, that's it. Hmm. But these people, these families, are so interesting, and the more I learned about them, the more interesting they became to me. You know, so many of them had sons who were who fought in the Civil War. You know, left and and you know, hundreds of people from Cass County fought in the Civil War. These were free, most mm -hmm. of them free black men um, who were descended from, this, from the free black community. And here they went back to the South and, and fought in the Civil War. Quite a lot of them had family members who did that. That must have been quite an experience to go back to where you uh, were Absolutely. And, and I mean, if we had lost that war, what would have happened to those men? Mm -hmm. It's hard to know, but that was a pretty amazing thing, I think, that they did. Yeah. One of the things I think is so interesting is if you see those, where it says the history of Cass County, mm -hmm. collected by Estelle Lawson. Um, she died just recently. She was quite an old lady. And her son gave these, these notebooks to he gave them to you, didn't you he? Did it on a ground railroad days. Yeah, and she has collected newspaper articles and obituaries over decades, and has put them in this those two books. And um, you know, I just I think someone like part of the reason I want to do something like this is for Estelle Lawson, mm -hmm. and for other people like her who really had such a pride. In what the family had done, and 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 um, you know the amount of time there was a lot of love that went into those those articles. You know they're all yellowed and and everything. But I, I left them as much as I could, just like she had them, um, except I, I just kind of replaced some of the things that were brittle and, and needed to be put in different protector pages. But I left her handwriting and everything so that so that she was a part of this. But um, I think there is a tremendous pride that the black community has, and rightly so. You know, they, they, um, 
they did something that was so difficult and they came here um, with a kind of a zeal for making making their families successful and happy it was a it was that group of people who probably their, their families maybe never had been slaves and or or if they had it would have been a long time ago so they they came from a foundation of um, of education in most cases they could read and write and how that happened I don't know mm -hmm. but they but they could and they had um, they had the ability to take this opportunity that they had in Cass County and say they saved their money they purchased land and became well-to-do farmers in in a in a time when in other parts of the country African American free black people were not able to even purchase land and here they were and it was that was really a unique kind of thing so there's so much pride you can see it as you as you study these families there's so much pride in what they've accomplished and and um, I just I think it's fascinating some of these are freedom seekers um, in addition to the free black families um, not as many because I had trouble following them quite often they changed their names mm -hmm. and so then I had a I, I couldn't tell for sure if it was the same family so um, it was a little bit hard I, I was able to identify a few freedom seekers who actually stayed in Cass County most of them of the 1500 who supposedly passed through Cass County most of them went on to Canada but a few did stay and I think part of the reason that they were able to is they were befriended by the free black community and the Quakers who established this this safe haven um, so that they felt that they could stay. And well, we know the Lawson stayed. Who else? Uh, Sanders. Uh, well, they were a different situation. But, but the Sander. But they did. They stayed. Sanders stayed. Um, the uh, the Brown stayed. Let's see who were the others that were. Uh, Shepherd stayed. So there were quite a few. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I don't have them all. I mean, I just. I, uh, I just have a few. But the, the atmosphere that the Quakers established early on, back in the late 1820s, where the Bogues and the Joneses came, um, very early on, so they were such um, staunch abolitionists that I think they kind of set the tone. Do you, Brenda, that maybe they set the tone for this um, activist kind of abolitionist mm -hmm. and um, and I, I think they um, I, I think that was that was the unique part of about Cass County because that's the way it, it began mm. they were given work um, some of them lived in ramp town for a period of time and then purchased their own land um, so Well, do you want to, let, why don't we talk about you a little bit? Talk okay. about me? Yeah, let's talk about you. Um, just, do you have questions particularly? Um, yes, I'd like to know a little bit about your, your immediate ancestors, you know, your, um, when did, now of course you have a long history on the Bonine mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but tell us a little bit about how that all came together okay. and uh, how you got started on this. And, and some of your connections to, to the coffee. To the yeah. coffee. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, my husband's family were Bonines, and I first was exposed to um, the Bonine house, the, the, bon the cemetery there, um, when I went um, to the first Bonine reunion that my, my father-in-law planned. And he had just recently written the genealogy of the Bonine family. And so he wanted to distribute it to Bonines. So that was the first time that I met some of these people. And um, 
Do you remember when so, that was, kind of what, what year? When it was about 76, I okay. would say. It was just after I was married, so um, I didn't have any children at that time, but I was just fascinated with, at that time, hearing about the Quaker part of the story, which is, um, which is fascinating. And um, so that was the first time. So then I went back several times after that with family, and I learned more each time about it. And I began to hear little stories about the Bonine House and the fact that it was part of the Underground Railroad. And, and I always thought that even though I wasn't a blood Bonine, um, my children and grandchildren were, and it was just, I, I knew that it would always be a source of pride to them, that they were part of something that was so important. And I think that was probably the, the, um, the interest that I had. It was for our whole family. And then um, I also, on my side of the family, on my father's side of the family, uh, are coffins. And they are distantly related to Levi Coffin. Um, my great-great-grandmother is Louisa Coffin. And uh, she, she came through Lenaway County, where Laura Havlin was. That's where they came through. They didn't come to Cass County, but that's, that's where they entered Michigan. So I've always had an interest in the Quaker, um, the Quaker philosophy, the Quaker religion, um, and, and what it allowed and encouraged people to do and to be. And um, the, the, uh, Louisa Coffin gave um, to our family a cupboard that was very simple, kind of primitive, and that is now in the Bonine house. It's not, it's not a Bonine um, piece of furniture, but it is Quaker, mm. so um, it makes me very happy. I think my great-grandmother would be, I think it was wonderful mm. that it was there. Beautiful. Um, well, I wanted to ask, uh, what were the particular stories that, that you read that got you realizing this is such a good news story. This is, this is something that is, is exciting and that people don't really hear about these kinds of things. What were the things that sort of got you going? Well, I think I taught social studies as a t in fifth grade. Um, I always taught the Underground Railroad as part of, that's part of the Michigan curriculum. But I never taught anything about Cass County. I always heard about the Cross Whites and Marshall. We always talked about that. We talked about Detroit we, but we, and, and Laura Havlin, but not Cass County. It was as if it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And when I began to realize that, um, that there was this whole story, I thought, well, it's, it's wrong that we don't have this as part of our Michigan heritage. And uh, I remember one time I said to my class, I said, you know, my dream is that someday I would like to take you all to the Bonine house and let you see. And, and they said, oh, Mrs. Bonine, do that, do that, <laughs> take no, us there. Wow. So, you know, and, <laughs> but anyway, um, it, I, I think children, students are really interested too in the story. I think they're... They're fascinated, and I think the question always is, what would I have done? You know, would I have been brave enough to do what they did? And I think students think about that a lot. Would, they, would, would I be brave enough? I don't know. I hope I would. <laughs> and from your teaching about the Underground Railroad, you developed the idea of the Wax Museum, which has right. become such a big part of of, of, of Bonine House. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the Wax Museum is something that teachers, it's not, I didn't, I didn't originate the idea, but the Wax Museum is something that gives students a chance to research and to actually be engaged in the character themselves. They start using the first person. I did this, or I wanted to do this. And they're talking about the person in the Underground Railroad. And so I think they've become, um, they, they, they just capture the, the feeling of, of that time. And it's something that, that can be researched by students themselves using primary source and secondary source documents. And, and they, so they feel that they have written their own scripts 
they memorize them, and then they share them with with everyone, and and they they own it, and it's it's just so exciting to see, and in this case, what really made it interesting for the Cass County students is that these were some of their own relatives that they were acting out, and uh, I I just I love that the little Lawson boy who who was. Cornelius Lawson, which would have been his great-great-great-grandfather, he was Cornelius Lawson, and, and he was just, he was so proud, and, and rightly so, so proud of mm -hmm. what his family had done, and, and those kinds of things, I think, stay with children for a long time. I think they remember those, those kinds of learning experiences. So you took your uh, Michigan History Day or, or the Michigan History um, Wax Museum format, and then with Stacy, with with your daughter-in-law, right. you transitioned that to Underground Railroad. Right. Was that, right. And then from there, they came to the Bodine House. How, could you tell us how that happened the first time and what that was like? Well, Stacy had been doing an Underground Railroad for Michigan history, mm -hmm. and she she said that it was it was okay, but it didn't seem to have the significance. The kids could choose a, stu a person to, to represent. Some of them would choose a sports figure or someone like that, you know. She didn't think that it really had the significance that it, that it should. Well then when, when um, Kathy started the, opening up the, the Bonine house, um, Stacy said, well, wouldn't it be exciting if the kids could actually do this at the Bonine house? And the kids were so enthralled with the idea. Yeah. And they ask about it. The kids come back, she said, from past years, and they talk about it. And it was something that they really enjoyed. And um, so, so then her class, along with Colette, her teammate, um, they, they worked on this. And the kids wrote their scripts. and. It, it was very personal. The learning was very personal. And the first one was in May of 2012. Right. right. That was the first Wax Museum at Bonine House. And that, that really inspired uh, the Cass County uh, Sam Adams School to, to do theirs. And, and of course, you were so instrumental in that. How did you go about finding the histories of the, de the, the descendants for Cass? Well, um, what I. It's overwhelming to a student because you can't just go on the internet and research something um, because these people aren't there. Um, you know, there there are a few places you can go, but you have to kind of put it together. So what I did was I gave them a beginning point. I gave them some census documents so that they could read through and find the names of the people in the family and what they did and whether they could read or write or who their neighbors were and all those kinds of things. Kids love that. And, uh, and any other kinds of documents like that, I, I was able to put together in a little folder. So it gave them a starting point to research this. And some of them took it farther, but at least it was a beginning. And then they took that information and gleaned from it um, a script that they wanted to tell about this person, and um, that's that's how it started. And you also purchased all the costumes for, <laughs> for well, the kids. Well, the, the costumes are an important part of it. Uh -huh. It's hard to ask parents to come up with a Quaker costume. You know, they they don't necessarily have that kind of thing. The hats and the the dress and and some of those things. It's harder for parents to do that. So I I thought if the kids are going to put all this effort into it, they really need to have semi-authentic looking costumes. And, and they, were, they were excited about it. They liked dressing up. And, mm -hmm. So it was fun. Mm -hmm. now, I know you, uh, you were taken with the story of the shepherds. Oh, that, that is yeah. a fascinating story. One of the freedom seekers who stayed, the family that stayed in Cass County, um, he was also a conductor along with Zachariah Sugart. And um, his wife was uh, Martha, Martha Barton's uh, shepherd. And she was given away to a doctor by her mother when she was six years old. And her mother didn't want her to be a slave. And I've thought so much about what that meant for that mother to do 
of a six-year-old girl, and she sent her north with this doctor, and she married Henry Shepard. They had 15 children in Cass County, mm -hmm. and they um, they were wonderful citizens. They were active in the community and, and very highly respected people. And they, I found the place where they lived right there in Vandalia. The house is gone, but the lot's there, and and you know that's where they live, very close to where Zachariah Sugar was. The two of them, I'm sure, were friends. It's on a driving tour now. It, it's on the driving yes, tour. Oh, it is, great! It is. Yeah. Yeah. that's great. Yeah. So yeah, that family is fascinating. And he, Henry Shepard, when he was 46. He joined the Union Army and went back to the South and fought in that mm -hmm. war. That, that, you know, that's, that's a person with real character mm -hmm. that, that would be able to do that and how dangerous it would be for him, but he did that. Just, do you have just general thoughts about anything? <laughs> you know, this is just for you, I think you'd like to. I just feel so fortunate to have been able to be a part of this. It has meant so much to me. It, um, I, I feel as if this is um, this community, this cast community, is a model. It can be a model for our world at a time when we really need it. We really need to have people care about each other and and risk what um, great, um, take great risk. And, and I think this community did it. They didn't talk about it, they did it. And, and I just, I mean, I wasn't a part of that, but just learning about it was thrilling to me. And you've given a gift that will live forever, and I think you, you have inspired this community. Wow. Absolutely. Thank you. I think it covered great. Yeah. And thank you um, for all that you've given us. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> the Benign House would not exist without you. You gave us the roof over our head early on. And you are our soul and Everything that you've given us will live forever. And um, we cannot thank you enough. Love you. It's my great honor. <laughs>